Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to make cables for your van or RV electrical system. We're going to take a look at three different crippers that I've used over the years. And I wanted to mention we're talking about essentially 8 gauge cables and larger. So this is an 8 gauge cable and uh, anything smaller than this you can really do with a hand crimper like this. But once you get into the larger battery cables, alternator cables, we're going to need a more serious crimping force and that's where these come in. So starting off, we have the hammer crimper. Basically, you're going to insert the lug terminal, insert the cable into the lug terminal, drop the anvil, and uh, hit it with a hammer, and you have your crimp. And then over here, we have a couple of hydraulic crimpers. We've got the smaller five-ton central hydraulics crimper from Harbor Freight Tools. And then next up, we have the Timco Industrial 11-ton crimper which is going to crimp uh, the largest cables out of the three. But I wanted to do a demo of each crimper and talk about the pros and cons of each type, starting with the lug terminal crimper, or the hammer crimper, excuse me. But uh, before we zoom in and do a crimp, I wanted to mention if you're interested in your overall van or RV electrical system, I have a resource that may be helpful for you. It's called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three major charging sources that are found in vans and RVs, which are solar power, shore power, and alternator power. And it talks about how they all have strengths, but they also have weaknesses. But when you bring them together into a holistic power system, they're going to balance each other out and make sure you have a good charge no matter where you find yourself out on the road. Whether you're plugged in at a campground or you're way out in the desert, you're going to make sure that you have a good charge so you're not worried about running out of power and you can just enjoy your trip. So there's a discussion of those three charging sources. Next up, there's a discussion of the different battery chemistries and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that's gonna help you narrow in on which battery type is gonna be right for your situation. And then lastly, there's a really interesting conceptual diagram. It's essentially your entire power system on one page. And it was originally requested by a student of mine that wanted to see all the connections from your charging sources at the top all the way through the system to where the power comes out at your phone charger or your microwave. What are all those connections in there? And how do the multiple charging sources come together and not interfere with each other? So how does the solar panel not mess up the alternator charging? How do they all kind of play nice together, charge your batteries, and get distributed throughout the rest of the system? So a really interesting diagram that I think you'll find useful. If you want your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you have to do is click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So with that, let's take a look at the hammer crimper. All right, so we have the Forney lug crimping tool. This is, as I said, it's from Forney, and I'll go ahead and put the model number at the bottom of the screen. This is about $20. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna retract the anvil and insert your lug terminal. So this is a six gauge lug terminal and uh, you can see there at the back, you can insert your cable. So we've got a six gauge cable. Go ahead and thread that in there. And uh, I've got a piece of wood so I don't dent my tabletop too much. Um, and at this point, we can just come in with our hammer. So you probably saw a lot of bounce and um, I'd recommend using this on the concrete only. But you can kind of see, you have kind of one shot to do this correctly, and um, I didn't get a full crimp. You can see it's a little bit loose. Truth be told, it would be better if I did this on the concrete, but you can kind of see why I quit using this particular crimper, is you kind of have one shot, you have to be a good aim with the hammer, and uh, the amount of force that you can exert with this compare, even with the hammer coming down on it, um, the hydraulic crimpers are just going to exert more force and they're also going to crimp all the way around the cable. Um, on six sides, they have hexagonal dies, whereas this is just gonna hit it in one point. And um, there are a couple of reasons that I quit using this and that is because um, Mechanically, it's more likely to pull out. As you can see, we didn't even get a full crimp there uh, as hard as I hit it. We do have a little bit of bounce with this table, but um, you're, you're, even if you feel like you get a good crimp, there's a chance that it'll pull out of that connection. 
and uh, if the connection is loose, it can get up hot and potentially cause a fire or melt. Um, now I'm kind of overplaying the faults with this. This has been used for a lot of years, especially for smaller cables. But um, the inconsistency of the crimps and the fact that it'd be really hard once you get into the larger cables, um, even if you can fit the lug terminal in there, which you can, um, you can imagine if I couldn't get this to fully crimp, you can imagine how much force it would require to uh, get one of the larger cables to crimp. So, um, you know, I see myself as a professional and I just wasn't able to get consistent results with this and uh, switch to the hydraulic crimpers. So let's bring up the uh, five ton central hydraulics crimper and take a look at that. The central hydraulics crimper is gonna come in its own case and uh, it's got these dies. Now, a lot of these are smaller. I said we're gonna do eight gauge and larger. These are 10 gauge, 12 gauge. Honestly, I would never use these to crimp a cable. It's frankly too much work to use a big hydraulic crimper on a small cable that you could do by hand. Um, so we are going to use the larger dies. Now, strike one for this crimper is we're using the same six gauge cable and terminal but uh, the dies, I'm going to have to use the four gauge dies. If we take a look at the six gauge dies, they are way too small for our terminal. I don't know if you can quite see, but uh, they're just too small. Uh, end of story. And a lot of times with these crimpers, this is most likely made in China, and uh, they are converting from millimeters squared for your cable size. In the metric system, they're going to use uh, millimeters squared they're gonna convert that to AWG American wire gauge. And a lot of times they get their conversion wrong. And I think instead of making the tool and testing the dies, uh, maybe they just send it out and say, <laughs> they'll figure it out. So I did figure it out and I have to use a different size. And uh, it's not the end of the world. You can kind of eyeball which size is gonna work. Um, or if you're gonna do a whole lot of cables of the same gauge, you can try different dies, you can find the dies that work and then make all your cables. So it's not the end of the world, but um, as I said, strike one. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we put in our dies, our four gauge dies, we're gonna tighten the wheel and uh, that is going to allow us to engage the jaws. We will, uh, let's put our terminal in from this side. Crank it down. We want to go until the uh, jaws bite the lug terminal and then we'll thread the cable in there. All right, we've got a little bite. We'll rotate it until it's straight. And now we'll thread our cable into the other side. And we'll go to work. Now you don't have to uh, crush these all the way down until the, the jaws close, especially if you are using different size dies. Sometimes it's a little bit of an art, <laughs> but uh, if you go all the way, sometimes it can kind of squish the metal out and uh, we don't want to do that. So that is a pretty good crimp. So that was, um, using dies that were one size larger, but not closing them all the way, and you get a pretty decent crimp. And uh, you can pull on this. It should mechanically, you know, hold up to quite a bit of force. And uh, I have to say, with these electrical systems, you don't wanna play around. You don't wanna have cables coming loose or cables that don't quite have a good uh, conductivity. You wanna make sure things are solid and that electricity is flowing. Because like I said before, if things get loose, um, things can get hot and then other problems can occur. So we, we don't want to go down that road and uh, the hydraulic crimper you can see it's just going to give uh, more force than we could possibly do with a hammer. And um, one other thing that I wanted to say on the central hydraulics I wanted to mention it is uh, $70 
And I'll go ahead and put the part number there at the bottom of the screen. It's from Harbor Freight Tools. Um, now, this works for a lot of cables. It's hydraulic, does a great job, as long as you use the right dies. Um, but the reason that I moved on from this was it maxes out at uh, one aught cable or zero, K, zero gauge um, American size cable. So once you get into the two aught cables, which is kind of the most common gauge that I use, this is not big enough to do that. And you saw me with the handles too. It's kind of, you don't have a whole lot of leverage. Um, it would be better for the larger machine. So really, as I said, I moved on from this because I couldn't do all my cables. I needed to do two aught and four aught cables and uh, just couldn't do it with this. And I was making my smaller stuff with this one and ordering the big ones and uh, that got old and I wasn't able to make my cables on the fly. So let me bring out the, uh, the Big Daddy crimper, the Timco 11 ton, and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here is the Timco, and uh, it's gonna come in its case with the various dies. Now I have to say, I took a lot of the larger dies out of here because it comes with so many, I had trouble finding the ones that I needed. So uh, some of them are, are for massive cables for like a power line or a main, uh, main line going into a building and I just didn't need them didn't need them quite that large and uh, So I max these out at four gauge. I'll go ahead and show you uh, Four gauge are those dies and that would make this cable. So compared to our little six gauge. That's uh, a much larger cable and this is about the biggest size I would put in a van or RV But uh, for our demonstration, let's go ahead and do the six gauge that we've been doing and I uh, actually have that die set already in here. We've got the little six gauge. This is the smallest that I have for this set. Now I should mention for the Timco, let me go ahead and put the uh, model number there at the bottom of the screen. This is $152. So a little more than double the price of the last crimper, but uh, they've done an excellent job. And this particular crimper, they have, I ordered a new one of these. You can see this one's kind of beat up. I ordered a new one for the van shop where I work and uh, they have improved the dies. There are um, a greater selection of dies and the dies are just perfect as far as um, the right size crimping, the right size cable. Uh, they've also redesigned some of the mechanics here. Uh, just. The most innovation I've seen as far as uh, cable crimpers, definitely recommend Timco Industrial and uh, really enjoy this crimper. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clip off this cable terminal and uh, we will crimp it with the Timco. These are uh, Klein cable cutters. I'll go ahead and throw that model number there at the bottom of the screen. Highly recommended. These will cut up to two aught cable, so they won't quite cut the uh, four aught. For that, you would need the uh, ratcheting cable cutters. These are about 30 bucks, and uh, the ratcheting ones are 230 bucks. So a little more expensive to work with that four aught cable, but uh, they work great for two aught and below. Come in here and strip this back. All right, so kind of the same process. We're gonna tighten our knob there and uh, come in and grab our lug terminal. We'll grab it, rotate it. Okay, looks good. Bring our cable into the back. So pretty good crimp there. Um, this is the actual six gauge dies. Uh, these are the actual six gauge dies. Uh, so I didn't have to change sizes. We've got an excellent crimp. 
the uh, metal didn't squish out too much. Um, overall, a great crimp, and uh, the uh, Timco definitely delivers. And with the longer handles, when you do the big cables like this, um, and you've got to put a lot of force, the, uh, the long handles are definitely going to give you some more leverage. And uh, this can do, I have to say again, another innovation they had, this goes down to, I believe, I think the six gauge was the lowest for this version. This is from 2018. Um, but the version they have out now goes down to 10 gauge, I believe. It goes down a couple sizes smaller. So before I would have to do my super small cables, I would have to use the hammer crimper or the, um, the smaller five ton crimper. But now when you buy one of these, you can do all the way down to those small cables, all the way up to the biggest cable. So this will do absolutely everything uh, for a typical van or RV electrical system. So really no complaints on this one. Thanks for checking out my review of the different cable crimpers. Hopefully that gives you a little insight into the differences between the various crimpers that you see out there. Now, as I said before, if you're interested in your overall van or RV electrical system, you gotta grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.